you all for your patience. It's an incredible thing when we can all come together and to support youth. It's an incredible thing that all of us have had the opportunity tonight to be heard, to be respected, and more importantly, supported by our community. Uh, I'm a total believer that when one of us succeeds, we all succeed, and I think we've demonstrated that perfectly tonight. So that makes tonight very special, and thank you. Uh, and you only have to sit through one more. <laughs> Uh, so my name is Meredith. Uh, as an artist, I also go by the name Luna. Uh, I'm a visual arts major at ESA, and it is my second year in the visual arts program. I'm a mixed media artist. I'm a mixed media artist, and my work involves tons of different mediums like painting, uh, photography, film, printmaking, sculpture work, installation work, literally anything I can get my hands on. Um, in the future, I'd love to experiment with new mediums that I've never tried before. And as an artist, I refuse to limit myself to anything. I'll offer a little look into what my art is about. My work showcases altered perceptions of knowledge to uncover and understand the physical reality that we live in. I work with ambiguous imagery and predicating the idea that not all that is taught is based in reality. I dismantle deceptive perceptions within themes of consciousness, Womanhood, ego, relationships, self-awareness, and death as a visual language within my work. My work challenges and critiques commonly held opinions on the nature of truth and functions as a non-prescriptive analysis of power structures and the resulting manipulations perceived as fact, embodying compassion and clarity based on experience to understand how opposites can live in harmony. Uh, to start off, I want to show you guys some of the work that I have made in the past few months. I recently participated in my school's Portfolio Day 9, uh, where I had the opportunity to push myself to create things I had never imagined before, made connections, and felt for the first time that I was really being taken seriously as an artist. Um, I also just want to point out that I have been painting for a little over a year, and people constantly come up to me and say stuff like, I could never be so conceptual like you. Um, and to those people, <laughs> um, yeah, that happens often. Um, to those people, I just say, like, I never thought I could either. Uh, as a kid, I wasn't artistic at all. Uh, but yet, here I am before all of you people with a strong portfolio and a, and a good body of work. So, um, anyone, any young person in this room tonight that is, you know, trying to find their passion, trying to find something to pursue, it really all comes down to believing in yourself and trusting yourself, and you will find that everything will come so easily and flow so easily after that, and uh, it's really all about manifesting, and I am proof that that is real and true. Um, so this is a collection of different things I made during this time and after this time, and, um, oh, uh, if you remember me from last year at our talk nine, I talked about a theory that I had been developing called Death Star, a uh, frequency which all my work exists on. Um, Death Star is still a very prominent energy uh, that embodies my work, but since then I have learned a lot more. Uh, sometimes when I create, I feel as though that I am a vessel for an energy force within me to speak its mind. And although that sounds really strange, in this way my art is very subconscious. What I mean by that is that as I am revealing messages to my audience about perception and more importantly deception, the messages from my work are revealing themselves to me simultaneously. Often when I'm drawing, there is no set intention of an outcome or certainty of the messages that will transmit through the piece. And on top of that, when I speak of my work or describe it, it is the exact same as if you were to view it, hear it, touch it, feel it, uh, it's the exact same information, uh, yet you are perceiving it in a different medium. Um, it's like speaking of and viewing my art is practically identical. It really all depends on how you're perceiving it uh, that changes the way that you feel about it. And my newest piece that I'm working on called The Isle of Desire demonstrates this perfectly. Um, so to explain this, you'll need to know a little more about how I work as an artist. All of my paintings begin as drawings, uh, whether it's in my sketchbook or on paper. When I'm drawing, it's simply for pleasure. Uh, it is very therapeutic to me, and sometimes I feel like it's what keeps me sane. Um, I don't think much at all when I, draw, uh, when I draw, unless there is a certain message that I'm trying to tackle. 
Um, it just really helps me release whatever may be in my mind, yet subconsciously, somehow I'm always aware of what I'm doing, even when nine times out of 10, my conscious self has no idea what I'm trying to accomplish. And actually, my conscious self doesn't even believe that there is something that needs to be accomplished. Uh, I'm literally just drawing. Uh, so the Isle of Desire is interesting because it started out as a drawing, as they all do. Uh, and it wasn't until I started to paint it that I was able to put the pieces together and really understand its true meaning. Therefore, really, you could say that the conceptual idea behind this piece started far before my pencil touched paper. Um, I drew it at a time of self-reflection, kind of a dark, depressing time, and was using art as a tool for healing, which I'm sure most artists find themselves doing at one point or another. Uh, after drawing the image and then turning it into this painting, which is still very much in its early stages and will definitely look nothing like this when it's done, uh, I began to interpret its messages and was really shocked at the connections between all the symbolism and how calculated and how specific it was, when at the time I drew it, I was putting no effort into making it mean anything. I'm just gonna go back, because this is kind of ugly. Um, to further explain, like specifically, islands are very symbolic of desires, and on this island there are women, and they are bleeding and essentially dying, and if you saw me last year, or if you know me, then you would know that a lot of the blood in my, in my art, which is seen a lot, is very symbolic of releasing something and letting something go. Um, so this island became a place and actually a symbolic desire to die and let something go. And it appears as some sort of oasis. Uh, islands are also very symbolic of the Garden of Eden, so there's this goal, this desire, that is like an oasis to release the past and let go. Um, this piece itself has become an isle of desire. Uh, which is exactly what consciously I was trying to do at the time of creating the piece, and it was something that had been consuming me. Uh, and at that time, I began to draw, not thinking of drawing with intent, but the messages that revealed itself were those of the thoughts in my mind. Not really sure if that makes a lot of sense, but um, it's this crazy relationship that I'm starting to have with my art where it's so unique, it's like otherworldly. Um, and it remains so calculated, so precise. It's almost like it can't be me who's it can't be me who is doing this, uh, but yet it is. Um, and, and I'm trying to explore this uh, in my art now more than ever. Uh, and and it, and because of this, I feel like I'll never get bored or run out of things to create. Um, this is something that is constantly, almost always occurring in my artwork. And sometimes I feel like I don't even need to think about a concept when I'm drawing. Uh, they are born no matter what. You could even say that some of my concepts were born when I was a child. Um, so yeah. Tonight I also wanted to take the chance to talk to all of you about a business that I'm launching April 1st called Luna Land. Yeah! Uh, Luna Land is basically a platform for anyone identifying as a female creative to share and express their work in the most honest manner without any medium of art they choose, not just being a visual artist. Um, as artists, females are working in a male-dominated industry where they may feel unheard or silenced by the men around them. Luna Land is a space for these women to freely express themselves and highlights female artists around Toronto uh, that may not have similar followings or opportunities as men due to the patriarchy that we live in. To be clear, uh, Luna Land is not a place for stating that female-identifying artists are better than male ones, nor is it trying to put females on a pedestal higher than men, it is simply honoring female artists as they live in the shadows of men in their industry. Luna Land is a place for understanding and breaking walls held up by our egos and fears, and it teaches us to release and let go of these things by observing the magic and the talent that comes out of the featured artists. It's a perfect opportunity to find local artists and connect and collab, uh, with them, with links to their websites and Instagram handles, and it's a perfect place to purchase art. Um, Luna Land has the fluidity to literally become anything once it launches, whether it's a mobile app, a dance party, a magazine, a fashion show, an art gallery, a performance. It could even be an amusement park, I was thinking that earlier. Um, yeah! It would be cool, yeah. Um, I think that's what makes Luna Land really different than your average blog. Uh, it's also the perfect spot for event hosts or local gallery owners to easily get access and find artists to showcase or host an event for. And did I mention it's completely free to submit to? 
in the future. I'm also like going through the process right now of making different merchandise that I will be sold on the site that I also have with me today out front um, that you will be seeing more of soon. Uh, it was something I created after reading different statistics about women in the art industry. Like, women make $20,000 less than men per year and make 81 cents for every dollar that a man makes. Uh, and I also originally wanted to create something for myself that was accessible to everyone, where everyone could see my art. But then I realized that there are probably hundreds of female artists in my community that are trying to do the exact same thing, that don't have the same resources as me or opportunities as me. So this is something that is for all of us. Uh, a chance for people to be heard when they may have not been in the position to do so. Uh, I hope to see as many female creatives in this room tonight on Lunaland when it launches. And I hope to see everyone in this room share and support it as much as you can. It has the potential to be huge, but only with the help of my community, and that is you guys. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me and supporting me as an artist. Uh, these past few months have been really incredible, uh, and the amount of support I've been getting it is beyond words. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a slide missing, but that is okay. Um, I have a business video that I created that I uploaded to a site called Make a Pitch, which is a uh, business site for young entrepreneurs to upload their, their video and get exposure and potentially get enough votes to move on and win money to invest into their business. Uh, I will be uploading that soon, uh, and yeah, if I get the right amount of votes, uh, this would be huge and get to the potential that Lunaland has to be. Thank you again all for coming. This is a really special night, and don't forget, April 1st, Luna Land is taking over!